leading scorer is Cameron Murray, averaging 15 points per game alongside the sophomore Marcus Maben. Sean, some things really jump out at you when you look at the stats for both of these teams. Kentucky almost a 10-rebound advantage over their opponents, and we know the great schedule that they've played so far. Louisville right at even. In other words, they have a neutral rebounding situation there. That gives a big advantage to Kentucky early in this ballgame. The other thing that Louisville just shooting the eyes out of the basketball, 51%, but let's face it, Kentucky has one of the best defensive teams in the country, holding opponents down to 37%, so something's got to give here. Jim Burr throws the ball in the air. Michael Bradley controlled the tip as he jumped with Alex Sanders. Kentucky in blue with the ball. Burr, the lead official with Tim Higgins and Tom O'Neill. An outstanding trio of officials, as you'd expect, for a game of this magnitude. Cameron Murray on Turner. That's a huge matchup here because if you don't stop Turner's penetration, you can't stop Kentucky. Murray's dropped a lot of weight. Murray's looking forward to that matchup. He said he heard Turner say on television the other night that he was the best point guard in the country, so he's looking forward to trying to stop Wayne Turner today. Scott Padgett with the first basket for Kentucky. Now, Turner has huge upper body strength. He's probably one of the most powerful guys in his position. Remember, he's obviously a senior who has matured beautifully in this program. A lob counted and a chance for a three-point play for Marcus Maben. Back screen by Louisville, something Denny Crum's been doing ever since he's been in this program. Terrific back screen. Louisville has always had good entry passes on that play. Just an easy put away. And the foul on Hashimu Evans, the first in the game. You know, surprisingly, Maben, although listed as a guard, is the leading dunker on this basketball team. So obviously no problem whatsoever going in from his position. He's a sophomore from Clarksville, Tennessee, just 6'3", 185 pounds. And Louisville has the lead 3-2. to two. Teams that press don't like to be pressed. Let's see how true that is. Louisville picks up full court man-to-man. -man. And Padgett at 6-9. The depth ball handler brought it across midcourt. Evans might have used a free arm to shed the defender as Nate Johnson went to the deck in the rebound in the arms of Williams. Really pushing this ball up the floor. Now you've got a question. The depth to go ahead and play at this particular pace if you're Louisville. Both teams have been going deep into the bench. That was Alex Sanders, the left-hander with the baseline jumper that made it 5-2. to two. Bradley, much more of a factor this year than last. He got his own rebound and missed again, and that's the rarity to 68% of the year. And it's Maven with another dunk. Well, there was a, a guard by the name of Daryl Griffith that was pretty good at dunking the ball for Louisville. Maybe pick it up right there. Louisville well, the crowd really into it early, pushing the ball up the floor. 7-0 Louisville run. They lead 7-2 in the first Cardinal foul. Called along the baseline. It's against Nate Johnson. You'll see pushing the ball up the floor, everybody on the run, and when you have guards that can finish with dunks, you have a tremendous opportunity to be very impressive on the break. Maven with a good catch, takes it right up over Padgett. Paul Smith into the game for Kentucky at guard number 11. Evans rebounded the Turner miss and scored. The power of Evans inside, one of the real competitors in college basketball. Bad pass. Picked off by Smith. Maven threw it away, and Smith converted. Boy, that's a cardinal sin there to throw that ball cross court under the other team's back. Literally a cardinal sin today. Sanders. Rebound by Bradley, and he was fouled by Maven on the rebounding action, the first on Marcus Maven. You're better when you've got possession down here to throw the ball all the way down the floor or to center court. Never throw the ball back across the other team's basket. Only bad things can happen, and obviously they did on that play. Paul Smith. Sophomore, son of the coach Tubby Smith. He got to get together with his brother Jeju, who's a senior Georgia for the Christmas holiday. And Tubby and Donna Smith have the entire family together. Hatchet posting up for the first time down low. Nice move. Started the game playing out of the almost like a point guard position. Takes it down inside. Kentucky has to show they can score. Oh, that was a wide open play. Good hustle by Murray. And Cameron Murray will shoot three. Great fake at the three-point line. He came up whooping at Michael Bradley, who fouled him. 
Kentucky has scored six straight points to take the lead, but now Murray will go to the line for three. Murray did a good job recovering that pass. He was off for an easy break. Aaron Pass picked it up, and uh, you know, Bradley has no business going out there trying to guard him that way. Murray's really off to an incredible year. Yes. 22 of 26 in the foul line, shooting 71% of his threes, which leads the nation. His overall field goal percentage, 62 and a half, so he is shooting the ball as well as anybody in the country. He's from Glendora, California. Played two years at USC and was a starter for the Trojans and then came to Louisville when George Rabling left as coach. To the bench goes Wayne Turner, replaced by Ryan Hogan. You know, those kind of stats, Sean, show you not only is he shooting well from a technique standpoint, but taking good shots. Yes. I mean, that was a tremendous decision on his part. Good, smart play not to shoot the three, knowing he had the big man up in the air and then drawing the three fouls. What you would expect for this point from Louisville and Kentucky, punching and counter-punching, and it's now the U of L by two, just more than three minutes in. From straight man all the way, Padgett now starting to look like he wants to go down inside a little bit more, which I think is good move for Kentucky. Hogan, a long three. It spins out. Had to kept it alive, but here's Sanders to Murray. Good decision by Murray. Johnson, a good fake, but Bradley recovered. Hogan knocked it free. That's a two-point try by Johnson. Rebounded by Maven. He was fouled on the floor. A lot of quickness on this floor for both of these teams, Louisville particularly, and those long rebounds uh, are something that quick teams usually have an advantage on, even though Kentucky in a power game would be dominant on the boards. Michael Bradley on the bench, Jamal McGlure is in. The foul was on Hogan, his first and the third against the Wildcats, and a steal by Saul Smith. Very important for Kentucky for McGlure to do something early and often. He was non-existent, foul trouble of course, but still non-existent in that Duke game. Brian Hogan drilled a three to put the Cats back up by one. Hogan now seven for 18 for the year from three. Trouble with the Johnson. dribble for Johnson. That's a smart move. There's Murray, three very intelligent plays he made to help his ball club so far early in this ball game. Timeout called as they were struggling to beat the time in the backcourt, it's a 20-second timeout called by Denny Crum. You mentioned the difficult schedule for Kentucky to 10 and 2 coming into this one, and this is the run they've had of late. You wonder about the ability to get up so much hype about the Maryland game was nationally televised. They were number two at the time, and an incredible hype for the game against Duke in the Jimmy V Classic Tuesday night. Well, it is a not only a tremendous schedule, but they've played a very good basketball. This guy right here is is really a super competitor. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I like about the way Tubby coaches, he makes moves often in a basketball game. He has great confidence and seemed like last year, obviously during the NCAA tournament, pulled all the right switches. And we see as an example, Hogan in this game, right off the bat, playing well. And guarding Maben. Tubby Smith preaches to his players, never get too high or too low. And you see the benefit of that philosophy. They were the comeback cast last year. Great pass and a great catch by Johnson for the dunk. Absolutely. It was the catch that made the play. Doubling down by Kentucky. Johnson still with the excellent hand. Louisville by one. Almost five minutes in. Smith's pass deflected. He's got to be ready to shoot on that cross court. And Evans travels. That's the first turnover committed by Kentucky. Timeout 15.04 left in the first half. The cards by one. <laughs> or the Kentucky thoroughbreds that, that just sang before the game. That was the barbershop quartet that sung the national anthem and then led the crowd in my old Kentucky home. And that certainly got the locals fired up for this one. <laughs> Here's Wayne Turner, Scott Padgett, and Hashimu Evans for the lingering Christmas carol. Now, a substitution that I expected to come out of that timeout would have been Eric Johnson coming into the basketball game for some instant firepower. Remember, he had 20 last year. A good steal by Padgett outside. And a hit ahead. To Ryan Hogan for the layup. You know, you look to come in with something different. Instead, it's... Uh, 
Deion Edward into the basketball game. Gives him a little bit more size, but obviously not the outside shooting power. Murray, the kick out to Maven. And there is Edward on the offensive glass for the putback. Edward has started most of the season at center for the U of L. Nice move. And a dunk by Edward after the great play by Tony Williams along the sideline. Good double team action on the trapping right in the perfect position. People forget Denny Crum's team at Louisville in the 80s used to be one of the great pressing teams in the United States, which he picked up obviously from his days with John Wooden at UCLA. But here is a perfect trapping double team position. Got by with almost being out of bounds there. Edward into the ball game. Two shots, both right at the rim level, and he's made them both. And yeah, Edward committed the foul on Saul Smith in the backcourt. The first foul on Deion Edwards. And here we see Eric into the basketball game right now. Eric Johnson, who had that 20-point game last year against Kentucky. He's number 23. Hogan, no basket. McGlure tipped it in, so they wave off the goal. But Hogan really has provided a spark off the bench with five points. He averages under three per game. Hogan had 15 against Georgia Tech in that tremendous blowout down in Atlanta. He was five for eight there. He's a sophomore from Deerfield, Illinois. The nephew of former Kentucky star Kevin Grevy. Still number six on the all-time points list at UK. Grevy, one of the great pure shooters that ever played in a Kentucky uniform. And they've had so many of them. So to be listed at all in that category is a... Uh, Shows you what he was able to do. And on to an excellent NBA career. Hogan's free throws make it a one-point lead for Louisville. And Hogan is seven of the 15 Kentucky points. And Tayshawn Prince called for the foul. Never did establish position, although Murray was a little frisky with the free arm as well. There's a little lack of experience there by Prince. You're going up against a quicker guy. You've got to reestablish position so that you can get in the position to set up the double team trap. Williams three wouldn't go, but Eric Johnson able to run it down. Cameron Murray. Rare three-point miss this year. Hogan, another rebound. He kept it alive for Tadgett. Well, Hogan's having some valuable minutes in this ballgame. Hogan feels it. Short that nice time. Got his own rebound and was fouled. He is playing well. He was fouled by Kevin Smiley, number 34, a junior college transfer who just came off Denny Crum's bench. Good release on that short jumper and battles right back in. You love to see a guy hit the ground and move forward for that offensive rebound. Terrific job. Seven of the nine bench points belong to Hogan. And he makes the free throw. And when you look at this Kentucky team, what they lost last year in regard to firepower, you know, guys like Shepard, Cameron Mills, tremendous outside shooters. Hogan really has got a spot on this team mm -hmm. that if he can show he can play this way because they need somebody they can count on off that bench for pure shooting. Kentucky has nine players who are averaging 10 minutes or more per game. Four players averaging in double figures in scoring. Padgett went out, replaced by Jules Kamara, number 40. With Turner, Prince, Hogan, Kamara, and McGlure for Kentucky. Murray, Smiley, Maven, Edward, and Eric Johnson for Louisville. Turner on Johnson. Now he's usually guarded by a bigger guy, which I think he likes better. Cameron Murray. Younger brother, Tracy Murray, the former UCLA star, now in the NBA when there is NBA action. He was called for travel. You know, a lot of guys are getting by with that move right there. Jump, stop, then keep on going with the play. Excellent call by the official. And four Louisville turnovers. Here's Ashimu Evans back into the game, replacing Ryan Hogan. You figure Hogan played, what, six minutes or so there? Really valuable. You mentioned the big game he had, Hogan had against Georgia Tech. He also hit two very big threes in their win over UCLA late in the first half of the close game. And that's what you don't want. You don't want McGlure to have that ball in his hands down in trapping territory. He wisely gets rid of it to turn it. 
Amira passed up a 17 footer. McGlure the jump hook and gets the bounce. Nice shot. One of the problems McGlure has, Sean, is that he does not have good hands in catching the ball. So consequently, he has to make the adjustment to catch it. By that time, the defense goes ahead and, and, and sometimes doubles down on him, but almost always in good position to guard him. A little better hands that eliminate that. Smiley to Alex Sanders. Good fake to get away from Kamara. Eric Johnson, a three that wouldn't go. Sanders out hustle two Wildcats for that rebound. Good passing by Louisville to hit the extra man. Johnson couldn't make the shot. Smiley, a long three. Relying too much on the outside jumper right now. They got to go back inside. And Murray fortunate to get away with that twisting no-look pass that was tipped out of bounds by the Wildcats. Louisville 0 for 5 from three-point land, and the Cardinals trail by three. When we're finished here at Freedom Hall, and that HDTV is just incredible. My CBS colleagues who have worked on those telecasts. Did you get me one of those for Christmas? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, left it in the store. I'm not, I'm not mechanically inclined. <laughs> Little 1-4 set up down low by Louisville. And an offensive foul called. Moving screen on Tobiah Hopper, who just came into the game. His first appearance, number 51. He commits the fifth team foul against Louisville. And here's Scott Padgett back into the game as Kamara takes a seat. There's Hopper, a junior from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, in his first year here as a junior college transfer. He did not play any high school basketball. And he preferred hanging out with his friends back at that point in his life. The junior college coaches discovered his talent. That is GD. Went to junior college, and now here he is playing major college basketball at Louisville. Good job of breaking the press by Kentucky. Two solid ball handlers, and Turner and Padgett bringing it up. Evan Prong to the bucket. I don't know where Johnson thought he was going. Wide open baseline cut. Nobody helping from the weak side at all. Shimu Evans, the senior from the Bronx, New York. The transfer from Manhattan College. Kentucky's leading score 14.8 points per game coming in. Murray to Hopper. Good and he throw it away. But Kentucky really plays hard in those days. Against Duke, I thought... Two teams there that really struggled offensively because the other guys are playing so hard on the defensive end of the floor. Ball got deflected to Turner and he laid it in. Got to get an assist for Padgett on that, but he just couldn't get the handle. Turner staying inside. Louisville is going to have to get back to running a little bit better half-court set. They were able to score early by beating the press and just scoring an easy basket, but now they got to show they can score in the half-court. Kentucky packing it back in. This is the largest Kentucky League, seven points. Acrobatic lay-in by Cameron Murray. Surprised Evans gave him that drive. Both of these teams going to be a little winded. This has been a high-paced game. So you mentioned numbers that jump out at the beginning of the telecast and off a nice feed from Prince of the Turner with the lay-in. How about this number? Kentucky's played 12 games. Louisville has played only six. Does that matter at this point in the year? Well, I definitely think it matters in this respect for Louisville. They have not faced this type of competition. And even though they had, you know, the good win at DePaul, they lost to North Carolina in the game that was a travesty from the standpoint of the number of free throw shots. But uh, this is a different level of competition for him right here. Good backdoor cut that time by Turner. Well, there isn't a team in Division I basketball that has played fewer games than Louisville. Louisville's one of six Division I teams that have played six games. The others are Arizona, Drexel, Manhattan, Penn, and Stanford. And there's a traveling call, the seventh Louisville turnover. The reason for that, the arena here was not available. They were not eligible for preseason tournament. And, uh, and they had exams, so all those things coupled together is why they've played so few games. And at the moment, they're also not eligible for postseason tournament action this year. There's Hogan, well, he's been unlucky twice. He could have six more points had two three-pointers not rattled out. Louisville is in the process of appealing its ban on postseason play. 
Little zone defense. Kentucky's shown this before in this half. They match up out of it and do a nice job with it. Maben from Murray. Now Tony Williams. Sanders. And Nate Johnson round out the fives from Louisville. Tony Williams with three. All right, just as the Europeans are teaching us, penetrate and dish back out for the jump shot. Evans kept it alive in the corner. Turner, rebound Williams. Quick ball to Murray. The kick ahead to Nate Johnson. And he almost had a three-point opportunity. It just rolled off. If you're going to play a zone matchup, the key is the guy guarding the man with the ball has got to play him hard-nosed man-to-man defense. You can't assume he's going to get help because with a little penetration, Murray has the easy dump outside for the shot. There's Nate Johnson, a junior from Camden, New Jersey. Louisville's had quite a pipeline from Camden to the Louisville basketball program over the years. He's the fourth Camden product to play at the U of L. The others, Milt Wagner, Billy Thompson, and Kevin Wall. Find out how your favorite team stacks up against the competition in the matchup breakdown. CBS.sportsline.com or on America Online at keyword CBS Sportsline. Of course, Milt and Billy were part of that national championship team. Turner, his pass through the hands of Tayshawn Prince. Two to tie and three for the lead for Louisville. And Johnson wants some of Prince. And the ball kept alive by Jeff McKinley just off the Louisville bench. Great hustle by him. And now a chance for Nate Johnson to tie the game at the free throw line. Now we almost had an interesting call there because Prince had his hand on the rim, but the ball was not in the cylinder. Nor, I mean, not on the rim. Now watch this. It's an interesting play right here. Great hustle by Padgett. Now Johnson goes up. Now watch Prince. See, he grabs the rim, but the ball has to be on the rim in that basket for it to be taken away. And then he comes up off the bench, gesturing to the officials that the rim was grabbed by Prince. But the officials, as you know, they made the right call. Saul Smith back in for Wayne Turner. Now Louisville noticed they, they went to the three-point shot for about four or five minutes. Now they're going back down inside. And I think that's what they have to do. They have to keep Kentucky's defense on it. Johnson rattled in the second free throw. The Kentucky lead down to one as Nate Johnson is five points for the U of L. Now where do the points come from with this lineup? Paget, a score. Saul Smith really doesn't look to score. Hogan has been putting the ball up. They could have some trouble here with this lineup. Smith stripped by Johnson. He missed the die. Williams got the rebound to McKinley. Maven. Johnson another chance, and he scores the conventional way. You know why he missed that layup? He was up too high. He really was. He just he was so fired up. He overextended himself. Here he comes again with a potential steal. Just a little bit too tired to get there in time. Tayshawn Prince quiets the crowd with a big three for Kentucky. First points for the freshman from Compton, California. Good luck by Padgett on the play to realize that the freshman really not too much for getting down inside and banging, but sure has a sweet stroke from the outside. Kentucky by two. Some of the subs ready to check in for the Cats and a turnover as Williams threw it away to Paul Smith. Terrific weak side defensive help again by Padgett. Tayshawn Prince stepped on the sideline right in front of Denny Crum. Take a look at that dunk by Nate Johnson. He gets up so high, he misjudges where he is and throws it against the back of the backboard. Kentucky is a two-point lead, and in a surprise, Ryan Hogan leads all scores with nine points. Well, I talked about Tubby Smith not afraid to go to that bench. He has that ability to pull the right guy out at the right time, and Hogan has really delivered today, and he's been very aggressive in his scoring. And impressed, too, by Louisville. Here's a team last year that was 12 and 20. The coaches told us before the game today that 
while they were watching the selection show last year knowing they were not going to tournament the players started lifting weights right then recommitting themselves to getting back into the NCAA tournament of course they might not be able to do that this year because of the NCAA ban pending appeal but that's a much better looking team than we saw from much of last year well it really is and it was hard to believe that the team that we saw beat Kentucky last year was a team that would lose 20 games throughout the course of the season Kentucky gets out of that zone back to their man to man Maven McKinley Sanders Nate Johnson Tony Williams on the court for Louisville Saul Smith really uses his hand defensively and getting by with it shot clock down to six and a whistle underneath the basket nice entry entry pass by Alex Sanders on in the inside I really think that the key as I said before for Louisville is to get some balance with inside scoring Foul and Desmond Allison who just came off the bench the freshman number 32 his first foul the team seven so it's a one and one opportunity for Nate Johnson both teams going to go about 10 deep here in the first half pace of the game requires that too Johnson missed the front end of the one and one and Saul Smith rebounded Cats with the ball up to they have Smith Prince Allison Padgett and Turner Allison didn't quite time that backdoor cut he had the good back screen if he had timed it a little better had a layup and Kentucky has now turned it over six times Sanders. Oh, what a catch again! How about that? Remember, Sean, he caught that one behind his back earlier and picked that one right off the floor. You got to give me what's that shortstop for the Boston Red Sox? Nomar Garcia there Pyra. You, there you go. That's the kind of scoop he makes on the short hop. That was a very tough play for Johnson as Alex Sanders on the run threw him a knee high pass, but he caught it and laid it in to tie it. Now he rebounds and sends Maven away. Off to Williams. Foul. Count it! Louisville really attacking the basket. I want you to take a look at a guy going down for a tough ball to catch. It just stayed right with it and concentrated. Terrific job. And then good two-on-one fast break opportunity for Louisville. Williams does an excellent job putting it away. And two quick fouls on Desmond Allison. Williams missed the free throw. The Louisville lead is two, 547. Remaining in the first half. Louisville comes into this game at four and two for the season. Their wins against Western Kentucky, Towson, DePaul, and at Dayton. They lost at Mississippi and at North Carolina. Turner out of control and called for the charge. Oh, Nate Johnson doing a fine job on that end of the floor as well. He had his first big breakout game this year against DePaul with 17 points seven rebounds and five assists. You'll see him move over here. That's hard to do because Turner really is terrific in that crossover dribble. Two fouls on Turner. He's gone to the bench. Nate Johnson has as well. And one of the things that uh, Kentucky is going to have to do, they are going to have to get some low post scoring in this ball game. Lloyd goes deep in the press, so Kentucky's not getting points off of turnovers. And Kentucky is right now looking for people to score. The Eric Johnson bucket gives Louisville a four-point lead. The first basket for Eric Johnson, who averages eight points per game. Solid and a screen. moving screen called on Padgett. Solid screen from back. He did not give the defender an opportunity to have the step. So Padgett creates the contact here. We'll see it. Excellent call. See, he doesn't come to a complete stop before the defender gets there. Proper call. Padgett's tired right now. Yes. Experienced basketball player, very skilled, great leadership qualities. Two years in a row, he's hit for 17 points in the final game, the NCAA Final Four. But right now, he's a little tired. They've been pushing it. With Padgett's first foul, he's a Louisville native. And he said, despite the fact that Kentucky won the national championship last year, all he heard about when he came home to Louisville was Cardinal fans saying, well, you were number one in the nation, but you were number two in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I don't think that would bother me too much. No. If I were it bothered him, though. You know, what did bother him, of course, was the year he had to come home and not be at the University of Kentucky. He made a tremendous turnaround academically. I mean, as much as he has become an outstanding, one of the top players in the United States in, in, in college basketball, 
I think if you were his folks, you'd probably be most yes. proud of the fact that here's a guy that was struggling academically, didn't really seem to care that much about it, really has committed himself to be more than just a great basketball player. Maven made two free throws. The lead grows to six for Louisville. The largest lead for the Cardinals as we approach five minutes left in the first half. See if they can get Padgett down low. He's got Williams on him. I think he's got an advantage there. Ryan Hogan from the elbow gets the bounce. What a game he's having. 11 points for Hogan. What amazes me about is his, his attitude and his look coming off the bench. I mean, he looks like he was brought in to beat the scorer in this game. You know, his uncle Kevin Greedy wasn't bad full about shooting, nor is Ryan. Jim Burr, the official, went down along the baseline, collided with the Kentucky cheerleaders, and had what would look from here to be a very pleasant fall. But he's back on his feet now. Tony Williams underneath, Deion Edwards. Well, Edwards showing a lot right there, being patient enough not to put it up. The shot would have been blocked if he hadn't hesitated. Lead again, six. Hogan breaks through the pressure. Padgett from the foul line. McGlure missed the putback. There are those hands I'm talking about. Hogan missed the three. Padgett kept it alive. Oh, Hogan with a pickup. What hustle. And knocked out of bounds by Maven. Now, if you're Louisville, and this is surprising to me, you want to keep up this attack pace. If you're Kentucky, you've got to slow it down a little bit, get half court at a time. Timeout 345 left in the first half. Louisville leads Kentucky 36-30. And the Cardinals have a six-point lead. Coming up on Pennzoil at the half, Jim Nance gets caught up on all the scores and highlights. That's Pennzoil at the half in three minutes, 45 seconds. Jim will tell you about the trip that the Kentucky Wildcats made to the White House. You're talking about 50-some percent. Remember, Kentucky's been holding opponents, top-notch opponents, to 37% shooting. So a terrific first half by Louisville, taking advantage of going over the top against the press and getting it down inside on occasion. There's other numbers that jump out at you. We talked about that during the game. Kentucky, the last couple of years, one of the best in the nation in field goal percentage defense. Louisville came in in this game leading the nation in field goal shooting. The Cardinals shooting 51% as a team. And they really haven't been burning it from uh, the perimeter today. They've just been beating that press, getting some easy baskets. Hogan, he got hit on the arm. No foul call. Maven to Murray. Smith trying to sneak up from behind. Eric Johnson clapping for the ball. He got his wish and got the roll. Three for three last year in the win. Important guy coming off the bench. Solid play. He can guard guys bigger than he can. Got a lot of power in his upper body. A tremendous leaper, as everybody knows. McGlure underneath for Michael Bradley. He was fouled, and he'll go to the line. Nice little high-low post action right there. What Kentucky needs to get this thing into a half-court game a little bit. This used to be Louisville's staple. The high-low post. Bradley does a good job putting it up with the left hand. Sammy Smith has two 6'10 players in there, and it was McGlure feeding the other 6'10 player, Bradley, and the foul on Eric Johnson, his first. That was the first basket for Bradley. Well, remember Kentucky when they had that twin towers of Melvin Turpin, Sam Bowie, who's sitting right, sitting right out down here to our right. They beat Louisville and worked their way to the Final Four before running into Georgetown. That twin tower post offense. And there's Kentucky back into their 2 3 matchup zone. And Murray, you got Eric Johnson on one side, Nate on the other, looking for some penetration in the kickout. Shot clock at eight. Penetration's necessary here. And there he goes. McGlore shut him off. Deion Edwin with the shot clock at one. The penetration was there. Cameron Murray just picked exactly the right time. And Edwards, just as in the case 
of Hogan has come in off the bench with some valuable points. Bradley found a lane to the basket and used it. Four points now for Bradley, the sophomore from Worcester, Massachusetts. Showing a little pressure and dropping back into this 2-3 matchup. Murray understands what's going on. Good student of the game. Can he use a little clock here? And he's got two guys on the wings that can really shoot. And a lob into traffic. He's got the foot to the Williams for the dunk. Well, McGlure did a terrific defensive job. The problem was the tip went to the wrong man. They come to trap Smith. Now Hogan bumped by a too anxious Eric Johnson. Denny Crum wanted Johnson to be there in advance. There's the lob. McGlure does a terrific job tapping it away, but there comes Williams from the weak side. Nobody helping out. Eight team fouls now against the U of L, so it'll be a one and one opportunity for Ryan Hogan. That was probably an ill-advised pass, and the mm -hmm. reason why, when you want to throw that lob, you want to throw it cross court. When you throw it in that angle, you've got the, the middle man in the 2-3 zone looking right at the guy who's coming in for the dunk. So McGlure in perfect position, but nobody helped out on Williams. Hogan. Rebound rolled off to Bradley. Williams jumped too early, and the ball rolled right past him to Bradley. There again, Louisville going right over the top. And Cameron Murray hit the rainbow runner in the middle of the lane. Now, Kentucky will make an adjustment in the second half with Louisville thrown over the top of the first line of defense on that press. Sanders doing a nice job right there. You know, Sean, despite the tremendous rivalry here, I mean, have you ever felt a better arena where people seem to be just enjoying the basketball game? The players get along fine. You know, the, the cheerleaders get along fine. Good sportsmanship being shown here. In intense environment, to say the least. Oh, absolutely. McGlory wow. the roll. But these two schools didn't play for 24 years. There's Padgett called for a shove on Cameron Murray. I can and tell the second on Padgett. I was there the day that they played after 24 years, and believe me, the environment wasn't like it is today. No, that was I in mean, 1983 in the NCAA tournament. It was that meeting that prompted the two schools to get back together, and they played every year since. That's right. Knoxville, Tennessee, overtime game. Louisville then went on, obviously, to the Final Four and played that phenomenal game against Houston in the semis where we all said, boy, this is going to be a terrible final game. There's no way that this NC State Club can play against <laughs> that Houston team we just saw. But obviously that wasn't true. But I'll tell you, that day in Knoxville, they had police security. They had all kinds of things figuring out what the, the worst things that could happen. There was no love lost between the two programs. And there were John Y. Brown was the governor of Kentucky back then. He said getting these two schools back together to play basketball was the greatest accomplishment of his career as governor. He said that jokingly, but it did take a lot of work to get them back together. I think that day he spent one half of the game on one side of the court and one the other. Yeah. If, I, if I remember correctly, he had a sport coat that was half blue and half red. A hat that had yeah, that what logo yeah. uh, on it, facing in each direction. Was he re-elected? <laughs> About a 10-second difference. Smith, Bradley, scoring points and punches. It was either McGlure or Bradley with that pass. I think McGlure will get credit for that one. But you can see Kentucky now going down inside, something that they lacked for a number of minutes. Murray, a three that wouldn't go. Out of bounds with eight-tenths of a second remaining. I wonder if Murray thought he was going to get fouled on that play because he had... Nate Johnson just breaking from the wing and could have had a much easier shot. And Tubby Smith has called a 20-second timeout trying to take advantage of this lap. Presently going after each other, and I think what has really been interesting is the way Louisville has attacked the Kentucky press. Now, we'll see right here. Kentucky gets themselves in a position with everybody in this side of the basketball. Louisville ready to roll. So Louisville throws the ball over the top, and watch what Alex Sanders does with Nate Johnson going the other way. They go right over the top of the press. Sanders with a tremendous bounce pass. Johnson with a terrific catch. Puts it back inside. And that's what they've been doing time and time again at Kentucky's press. Now the halftime stats brought to you by Charles Schwab. Look at the shooting percentages. Unbelievable. 52% for Kentucky and 63 for Louisville. 
You're talking about shooting 63% against a team that was number two in the nation field goal percentage defense last year and came in here with an even better field goal percentage defense at 37% this year. The other thing that's amazing, both coaches go into their benches early and often. Both teams have gone 10 deep, and in the case of Kentucky, eight guys have scored. In the case of Louisville, seven have scored out of the 10. Terrific. You know, also in the case of Kentucky, eight players played 10 minutes or more. Louisville turns it over on its first possession. This is Wayne Turner with Scott Padgett. Tayshawn Prince now. Shimu Evans and Michael Bradley begin the second half for Kentucky. Prince for three. Rebound saved by Sanders to Cameron Murray. Prince has got to be ready to shoot on that particular play. Look at that. A lob to a guard. Can't get over Turner. And then a foul call with Kentucky in transition. They tried to lob it to Marcus Maben. They lost it up underhanded by Nate Johnson, but it was rejected. And that started the Cats in the other direction. Well, they were the comeback Cats last year. One of the few times all year that somebody made a comeback on them. Louisville was down in the first half last year, but played that sensational second half, in which everything they did went well. Seven to ten threes. Let's see if Kentucky can be the comeback kids in this one. Colin Marcus Maven was his second. And the team Evans turned it over as Tony Williams intercepted the pass. The team sloppy here in the first minute of the second half. Boy, Nate Johnson, tremendous hustle. There's two. He was down for two games this year. Sat down by Denny Crum for the off-season uh, altercations. And here he is in this game playing so hard. Bad shot on his part there, Oliver. Evans wide open. Tayshawn Prince underneath. When we talked at halftime about how well played the first half was, they are trying to change that opinion quickly. Neither team has scored in a minute and 24 seconds and plenty of turnovers and fouls, however. You know, I think that these guys are, are going to have to catch their second win here. You know, sometimes you come out, you're so fired up. You can see Padgett right there, Grass trying to get some breath. Prince doing the same thing. Padgett missed the three and the tip in by Michael Bradley. Bradley, remember at the end of the first half, Ian McGraw was both up around that rim, doing a good job putting things back. Eight points for Bradley. Maven answers with a three. Kentucky was in the 2-3 zone. Uh-oh. Padgett turned his ankle against the stanchion. I think he's going to be all right. Dave Higgins making sure that he is all right. And also showing him that he can run the best baseline if he has to. We see a little different concept by Louisville. They allow you to get the ball inbounds and then try to trap in the corner right here, but Turner recognizes it, gets rid of it. Eight-point lead for Louisville, nearly two minutes into the second half. Evans fouled on his bounce in Belaine. Evans, of course, with the incredible game against Maryland. Uh, tremendous show. That was another game that went up and down the floor. Maryland, of course, likes to play that way. And they got a real taste of their own medicine playing against Kentucky and Rupp Arena. Now, Kentucky has already played here once this year, beating Indiana in overtime. It's not like they're not used to lose. Evans was big in that game as well. He had back-to-back -back big games against Indiana and Maryland. He threw an air ball up there. But those performances against the Hoosiers and Terrapins earned him the SEC Player of the Week honors. He had 22 points, nine rebounds here three weeks ago against Indiana, then 31 points a career high in the win over Maryland. Cameron Murray is guarded by Tayshawn Prince, a couple of Californians there. And advantage Louisville on that one. There's no way Prince going to stay with him on a dribble. Williams, the left-hander, buries a three. Now that's, a, that's a big mistake by Kentucky. He can't handle him one-on-one. -on -one. There's and a push. Williams shoved Evans as he was about to catch the ball and lay it in. When you have a bad matchup like that, and Louisville recognized it right away, Cameron Murray recognizing Prince is not going to be able to handle him one-on-one, -on -one, so he just beats him off the dribble and kicks it out for the easy jump shot. The last play, Billy Evans was guarding Tony Williams when Williams hit the three. Williams lingered in the foul for a long time. Evans took off, and that's what got him ahead of the 
Field. That's blocked by Turner from behind against the bigger man. Louisville by 11 early in the second half. Bradley becoming a force inside. Nice job, young man out of Massachusetts. Originally intended to go to BC. Becoming quite a factor in this ball game. He elected not to go to Boston College with a couple of friends, and he thought were to be admitted to Boston College. His basketball recruits were not admitted. He decided he wouldn't go if his friends weren't going, and that was the beginning of the end for the Boston College program as we knew it. Jim O'Brien wound up departing. It was an ugly mess, and now they're trying to recover. You know, when you think of what might have been at BC, mm -hmm. I mean, it was going to been one of the more powerful teams in the Big East, and to end up where they are now is kind of hard to believe. And, of course, Jim O'Brien's got things going his way at Ohio State. Looking Scooty Penn, who left Boston College with Coach O'Brien in the wake of all the controversy. Evans running the floor again after a Williams three-point shot, but he lost it out of bounds. Both teams looking to break over the top of the defense. Here's a much better matchup for Kentucky. Turner back out there on Murray. Paul Smith way out on Mabin. Then we try to bounce it into Nate Johnson. Johnson went by Padgett. Here's Saul Smith. Now, everybody from Louisville wanting backcourt, but the ball had not yet gone over. You know, that's, that's probably the rule that fans misunderstand more than any other. Mm -hmm. Everything has to go over half court, the feet and the ball. Bradley, you can wow. see that he wants it. He shed Edward, but then missed the shot, and Saul Smith fouled on the way back up. Now, you, you pointed out something, uh, I think, very a wise uh, comment there, Sean, is that you can see that Bradley is now becoming a force in the low post. Now, what Kentucky has to recognize is that not only does he want the ball, he's in a position to get the ball. Now, this whole game is going to change if they'll start going down inside to Bradley. Takes it it says he's always had a good offensive game talking about Bradley. It's the improvement at the defensive end that has really resulted in increased playing time this year. Yeah, he's basically put McGlure on the bench, which mm -hmm. probably surprises uh, a lot of us. And the fact that you figure now McGlure with Nazi Muhammad gone would be stepping right into this lineup. But Bradley wants that ball. They just need to go ahead and recognize, get him the ball, and make them uh, less than a one-dimensional team as they have been in the first half. Colin Dion Edward was his third. It sent Saul Smith to the line. He made the first. And the second as well. And we have our first time out of the second half. 15.47 remaining. And if you ever saw him, you would say it I give them, uh, I, I give them the, 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 the head start there over Kentucky. The you choreography do. was better. Here we see a guy, Scott Davenport. Assistant for Louisville, but he has close ties, of course, up with, with Sonny Smith. He coached with him at VCU, and there's another young guy, Vince Taylor, who went to Duke, but he grew up in Lexington, Kentucky, one that got away from Kentucky, much like Jeff Mullins, who was one that Adolph yeah. Rupp hated to lose, a Lexington, Kentucky man. Of course, the other assistant there is Jerry Eves, who was part of that outstanding team in 1980 that won the national championship. So, Benny Crum... Uh, well schooled on that sideline with his assistants. As is Tubby Smith, who's been some of his assistants been with him a long time. The three for Eric Johnson rattled out. And Deion Edwards couldn't get a bounce along the end line. Evans fell down and lost it, and Alex Sanders was fouled as he went up. Tremendous effort on the part of both teams right there. Evans just couldn't control the ball on the way down, and Louisville stayed with it. Paul Smith committed the foul, his first and the first against Kentucky here in the second half. So one of the nicest things we saw during the holiday season, reading some articles preparing for this game about Tubby Smith. Saul Smith was quoted in one of them saying, more than anything else, my father is a very nice person. Isn't it wonderful to hear Can't children talk about that. their parents that way, particularly at this time of the year? He was going to walk on at Georgia, play with his brother before his dad got the job here. Now he's a scholarship player at Kentucky. Here's the full court pressure. Evans underneath to Bradley, and he was fouled. 
Good hands by Bradley. We talked about Johnson with a nice catch, but here's a six foot ten ball player catching the ball on the break. Bradley having an excellent offensive game here. Evans pushing it up against the press. Eric Johnson trying to fail him, follow him. There's Bradley right with it. Nice hands. Well, I remember when he came out of Massachusetts. One of the questions about Michael Bradley that many had who watched him play high school basketball was coming to a Rick Pitino program as he was at that time. Would he be able to play the full court game, pressing and trapping, because the thought was that he wasn't very fleet of foot, but he gets up and down the floor, it seems, exceptionally well for a 6'10 man. Very well, and uh, one of the things that you'd have to figure, a tremendous conditioning mm -hmm. uh, to get in shape to be able to play this kind of game. Obviously, this young guy working hard on his game, improving uh, tremendously from the first time I saw him there. Four fouls on Deion Edwards. Padgett couldn't rebound the Bradley miss. It's still a nine point Cardinal lead. Evans a great steal, and then he travels. Boy, what hustle, though, by Evans. And he skied to pick that one off. You couldn't expect him to come down and be able to uh, hang on there. Bradley goes to the bench. McGlore back in. So now Kentucky not as strong in the offensive end. McGlore, let's see what he can do defensively. Maven to Murray. Hopper is back on the floor for Louisville. With Eric Johnson and Tony Williams. Deion Edward had a good first half. We haven't seen him back in there yet. On the bench right now with four fouls is Edward. Tony Williams. To Eric Johnson and the shot clock goes to 12. Cameron Murray to step back three. Rebound Maven. Stripped by Saul Smith. Excellent hand by Smith. Smith a tenacious defender. And he's going to go after you with those hands all the time. Wayne Turner leaned in and missed. Well, Evans there's, got it out of the double team. If there's a knock on Turner, it's his jump shot. Padgett. Knew as soon as he released that one, it didn't have enough. Padgett not getting any lift with his legs. Maven missed the three. Hopper into the corner. Out of bounds. It'll be Kentucky basketball. Near the conclusion of today's game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Today, Chevrolet has contributed more than $6.5 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Six minutes played in the second half. It is still Louisville by nine. It's that same play that Louisville ran to start the ball game. Blind screen from the backside. Patrick came right over the top. But he does not have his best legs today. Looked like an ill guy's pass, Billy, when Smith threw it because Padgett was well defended down low by Maven. You can see that he's really not skying. And on that last jump shot, Harley got off the floor. He's working so hard on both ends. Doesn't look like he has a lot left. As he's trying to complete the old-fashioned three-point play, Maven's foul is third. And here come the Cats back within six. You see how they've changed a little bit their defensive pressure. Instead of playing in front of the Louisville players to deny the inbounds pass, they're playing behind so they can't go over the top as easily. Nice little subtle move by... Tubby Smith. One, two, two. Looks like they'll look to trap if they can. Murray sees the defense, recognizes it well. There should be somebody open on the foul line if they put a guy in there. Williams tried to bounce it. Not a good idea. Had just picked it off. McGlore shoved out of the post by Nate Johnson. Look out. McGlore and Nate Johnson need to be separated. Good piece of officiating down there. There was contact on the play, but you have to ask this question. McGlure, not the most gifted low post player. Johnson had good position on him. Let him catch it and try to make a move. He tried to make the play on him and fouled him. You see right here, he's got the move. He's pushing on him. And the foul was called on the original shove you saw with the forearm before any of this action. You can see Tim Higgins already stepping out and indicating that it was for the chuck with the forearm. Great sportsmanship by Padgett there to hold the foul from Louisville Johnson. Make sure nothing else happens. Now, what's that call? 
There have been technicals assessed for the pushing and shoving after the whistle. Jim Burr explaining the situation to Denny Crum. This has been a flawlessly double technical game. Johnson and McGlure both getting one, but not a fighting foul. I don't think the referee's designated as a fight, which is good. So McGlure will go to the line for the fouls committed by Johnson on him, and then you'll have... That will also be a personal on both of those players. So Johnson picked up two fouls on yeah, that play, and that was four. Right, picked up two, two personals. The technical counts are personal against him. McGlure missed the free throw. Now, and it was a one and one opportunity because the foul was before the shot and Louisville was over the limit and they won't bother with the technical right, free throw. Right, you don't shoot it, you don't shoot in a double technical, you don't shoot the free throw, so it'll be Kentucky's ball out of bounds on the air. Jim Burr tells Tim Higgins to wait a minute. And now he's going to confer with the official score. In McGlure and Johnson, you have a couple of players who have been involved in some disciplinary action in the respective programs. Johnson missed the first two games of the year for problems off the court. And McGlure likewise. And McGlure did as well. So neither one of them in the good graces of the coaching staffs at the start of the year. And one way to get back in the doghouse is to get involved in some of the nonsense there on the border of and one Kentucky player that was also in some problems, Myron Anthony, has transferred from Kentucky. Hadn't picked out his school yet, but uh, he would have helped his depth even more. Hogan nice. underneath the pageant. Another fine play by Ryan Hogan. You sense a little bit of churn right now in regard to momentum. Mm -hmm. Kentucky going back again in this 1-2-2 defense. They showed a 2-3 matchup in the first half. Now they're showing a 1-2-2. Nothing happening until they get somebody on that foul line. There they have Sanders there now. There he is. Good play. And he was fouled. Didn't get the shot to drop. He goes on head at number 34. His third team third. Here we see Hogan driving down inside. The first half he was looking shot. Second half he looks past. Both uh, working equally well. Now here's where I said it. Put a man on the foul line right there against that one, two, two. He's going to be open. Sanders does a good job moving with the ball. Gets an easy opportunity inside. Three fouls on Padgett. Sanders trying to end this mini run by Kentucky. They scored five on answer points. It's still a five-zero run. As Alex missed the first. Padgett has to sit down, as was in the case of the Duke game, and that really cost Kentucky a, a chance to make that comeback. Duke got that. Tremendous uh, surge right at the start of the second half. Got a little foul trouble. You want to have him on the floor if you're Kentucky. Five points now for Sanders, and that's the margin for Louisville. Pick ball, they'll reset the shot clock. The crowd thought Hogan traveled. Now we have that twin tower offense with Bradley and McGlure in there for Kentucky. See if they go high post, low post. Try to back it down inside. But the Lord tangled up again, this time with Eric Johnson. And now Eric, Eric thought he should have going, been going to the line at the other end. Now Eric Johnson obviously given up a lot of side. No question is a foul right here by Eric. And he tried to win that Academy Award, but he's given up just too much size down there. Already 10 team fouls against Louisville for Kentucky who shoots two the rest of the way. 12.08 remaining. McGlure made the first of two. Jamal has seven off the bench. He's from Toronto, Ontario. His parents are from Trinidad originally. Only a 53% free throw shooter. Kentucky not a good free throw shooting team. Only 62% on the year. And they stay in this 1-2-2. Two, two. See if Sanders takes that position in the middle again. There he is. Cameron Murray, a much better player, it seems, this year. He lost 20 pounds over the summer running the beaches of California. Eric Johnson shot blocked by McGlure. Johnson got it back and was fouled. Well, Johnson's 
strength and his tremendous leaping ability, the only thing that enabled him to get it up over McGlure, who's got the long arms, led the SEC in shot blocking two years ago where he set a Kentucky record for his class. The young man's a very good shot blocker. And McGlure was called for a second foul. Here's Eric Johnson, eight out of ten overall from the floor last year in their win against Kentucky. He came off the bench in that game. And he said that beating Kentucky last year was the greatest moment of his career. Now a senior from Cincinnati out of Woodward High School where he was a teammate of Deion Edwards. Now his Louisville teammate, Bradley down the lane. And he shuffled his feet and got called for traveling. 11.35 remaining. Louisville by five in CBS Sports coverage of NCAA at North Carolina. And one of the things interesting, last year they tried to win with only four men on the floor for the last minute and ten seconds of the game. Actually outscored North Carolina eight to six during that period of time, but not the way you want to try to play. You don't think they'll play with four the entire game this time? No, I don't think so. After the success of a year ago when they lost players due to foul difficulties. Here we see Kentucky staying in that zone. Evans doing a good job out on the point of that zone. Williams with the shot clock at three. They need a shot now. Hopper had it blocked by Bradley. Louisville's gone more than six minutes without a field goal. They have had four free throws during that time. They did rule it a shot clock violation, and Kentucky takes over along the end line. Now, Tubby Smith has thrown a lot of defenses to try to find one that can slow Louisville down. This 1-2-2 two, two looks like it's the best so far. He tried man-to-man. -man. He tried various types of presses. Now he's back to a – and then he had a 2-3 a, a zone – and now he's at a 1-2-2, two, two, and this has been the most effective of the bunch. Hogan, the runner, wooden goal, rebounded by Tony Williams. Not the kind of shot you want with the team that's on the floor right now. Hogan trying to do a little bit too much. Did he get the ball in Turner's hands? He hasn't made much happen today, but he certainly is capable. Man, a brush foul at the three-point line. Call against Hashimu Evans. That's three on Evans, five on the team, so not yet a bonus situation. Shunu had 89 by his count, friends and relatives at that game in the Meadowlands the other night against Duke. Among the friends in attendance, his former coach at Manhattan, Fran Priscilla, to whom he remains very close. He left Manhattan when Priscilla left to go to St. John. And the ball out of bounds. Last touch by Tony Williams. It'll be Kentucky's ball along the sideline. Williams here puts the ball right out to Hogan. Hogan says, no, thank you very much. I'll take it and go my way. Here we see he reaches it out. Hogan goes. Then Williams comes back in, tries to strip him with the ball. No call made on the play. It'll be Kentucky's ball. Oscar for the big lead over Georgia Tech. Could be a big day for the Flying Dutchman. That must be Bill Van Bredikoff coming back with a uh, Van Bredikoff with Bill Steven. I want to think. Bobby Crimmins, of course, having uh, an unbelievable year as far as ups and downs. Kentucky just blew Georgia Tech away, and then they came back and beat North Carolina after North Carolina had knocked off this Louisville team, which is what's making this college basketball so interesting. After Eric Johnson's basket, the foul called on Tobiah Hopper, his second. Another two-shot opportunity for the Cats. This time it'll be Wayne Turner at the line. Turner missed the first. His scoring has improved with each season. Well, as has his three-point shooting, but he's still not a good shooter. He only shot 56% from the line the first two years he was at Kentucky. It's kind of amazing, he, being the great scorer that he was in high school, it's one of those kind of things, practice does not make perfect, it makes permanent. Mm -hmm. And he has a permanent shooting style, which is not one that's conducive of having a good stroke. Hard to change it. You know how hard he must have worked as a kid to put the ball up there. He is playing tenacious defense on Murray, and he actually bodied Murray to the court. Three fouls now on Turner. 
I think that was a case. Turner just so strong. Murray, as soon as he felt contact, went to the floor. Watch right here. I don't know if Turner really made that much contact. You can see right there, it might have been Murray that made the contact. But Turner is so strong. The next foul will result in the bonus situation. 16 fouls now on Kentucky. Missed the matchup down inside. Eric Johnson had Saul Smith at a low post. They didn't get him the ball. Sanders, great pass. Hopper might have hopped and gotten away with it. I think he did walk. Oh, a big pass! And Hopper scores again. Nobody was moving. Padgett got stuck. Really surprised. Turner just stayed in the same spot. Hopper's long arms was able to pick it off. Big mistake by Kentucky. Left when Kentucky got close. Louisville went on a run. It's now a 10-point lead. Nice cut without the ball by Padgett, but he doesn't get it. Turner discarded Murray and then hit the jumper, and Wayne Turner has seven. You notice how Turner likes that little 12-foot jump mm -hmm. shot. You know, he doesn't like it beyond 15, but he can make that little shot inside. Turner's a senior from Boston, Massachusetts, playing in career game number 127. He has a chance to set the all-time NCAA record for games played. It's 148, held by Christian Leitner. Denny and a Crum. timeout called by Louisville at 20. I'm sure that Denny's going to say, let's go back inside some. We'll see that inbound, inbound steal. See, Padgett looking to throw. Nobody creates a passing lane for him. Turner stood right there, and there was nothing that could happen other than bad things, and Hopper just goes ahead and puts it right in the basket. Here we see, watch how Hopper's got it made right here. Nobody is going to move for Kentucky to create the passing lane. There's Turner just standing, standing. He doesn't create the lane. There's the interception. Good pump fake and the putback. Sets up that 10-point lead at the time. Let's see if Denny Crum decides to go down inside. McGlure in the ball game. Padgett in the game. Williams, a three, and the lead goes. The drive to win the point. It's been effective all day long, Sean. Turner blocked by Hopper, and what minutes he's giving them right now. In the first half, it was Deion Edward. Now it's Hopper giving him the great second half, and that's not what Denny Crum wants for him handling the ball in the backcourt. Just threw it in the Hopper. 11-point lead for Louisville, 7.43 remaining at Freedom Hall. Some were reflected an even game, but the Louisville lead is up to 11. Time starting to run out for Kentucky, 7.43 left. But I think we saw this act a couple of times last year from the Cats. I think there's still plenty of time to go. One of the things that's amazed me about Louisville is how they have attacked the Kentucky pressure all day long to the point that Tubby Smith finally said, you know, I'm going to take off a little pressure and go to my 1-2-2 two, two zone. That seemed to be pretty effective, but Louisville's coming up with a lot of big plays. This matches the largest lead for Louisville, 11 points and on a 7-2 run. It's Turner with Padgett, Saul Smith, Evans, and McGloin. Hopper down there on Padgett. Smith got it back. Turner had it blocked by Hopper. How about this? It was Edward in the first half who really did a terrific job off the bench. Both teams have been uh, getting great service today off their benches. Not just in minutes played, but really productive. Cameron Murray with Tony Williams, Eric Johnson, Alex Sanders, and Tobiah Hopper. There's the double down by Kentucky. Oh, he just threw it up for grabs, and Saul Smith nearly overran it. Turner lays it in. Now, again, we talked about the, remember the play early in the first half, throwing it under the other team's basket. The last thing you want to do if you're going to throw the ball out, throw it towards your basket mm -hmm. when you're on your end of the floor. You throw it back in the back court, you've got a problem. Hopper again having trouble with the ball in the back court. I'm sure Denny Crumb's going to look down his bench and say it's time to come back in with Nate Johnson. You see Hopper down on the baseline. 
Sanders goes after the shot, then Hopper goes in there and does a terrific job blocking it. Sanders grabs the rebound. But right now, Denny Crum needs some better ball handlers because you know Kentucky's going to go after him. There's a terrific block on Turner. Well, coming up later this week, CBS Sports proud to present the Norwest Sun Bowl from El Paso, Texas. It's the USC Trojans back in the bowl game after missing bowl activity the last two years against the Horn Frogs of TCU. What a turnaround for that program. They won one game last year. That's Thursday afternoon right here on CBS Sports. And a foul on Saul Smith as he was manhandling Cameron Murray. And that's the second personal on Saul Smith, and now a one-and-one -one opportunity for the Cardinals. Now, if you're scouting Louisville, how many times have we seen Cameron Murray on contact go to the floor and pick up a foul? Mm -hmm. Now, we, how many times have we seen Saul Smith aggressively use his hands? So, if you're a coach playing either one of these teams, you're going to say, okay, look, Smith tries to body you with his hands. He's very aggressive with the hands. When you feel the contact, get out of the way. If you're a coach scouting against Louisville, you've got to say, hey, this Murray's going to go down on us. So, you know, be careful not picking up any cheap fouls. And he's an excellent free throw shooter. So the last thing you want to do is put him on the line. Two years at USC. Transferred here when George Raveling left. He said something that was eye-catching as well. Cameron Murray, by his experience at USC, said he left in part because a number of the players there had gang affiliations. Saul Smith fouled. On his way to the basket, a block called by Tim Higgins as Alex Sanders tried to step in. 11-point lead, Kentucky uh, kind of out of control a little bit with Smith going down inside. Sanders was waiting on him inside, and Smith was very lucky there. Plenty of time left in this ball game to make a comeback. They don't have to play quite that aggressively and out of control. 4 point for Smith. It's amazing how things change so quickly. Last year when they lost, and Kentucky lost to Louisville early in the season, fans, some of them were already after Tubby Smith, saying maybe it wasn't the right choice. And one of the major criticisms was his son played too much. And also that they were losing in Rupp Arena. That's right. The problem is nobody could beat them when they got out of Rupp Arena, particularly in the NCAA tournament on the neutral floors. When the season ended, they were 35-4 and four and had the seventh national championship in Kentucky history in the first year for Tubby Smith as head coach. Murray goes down again with the touch. Big, solid screen by Sanders. Maven, high arcing three, maybe four. Unbelievable shot. He shot it over the floor. Put an arch on it. You are going to see one from downtown here. Look at the arch he puts on this thing. Wow, nothing but net. McGlure comes out. Tremendous shot. Look at how high McGlure was up in the air, and he still got the shot off. Maybe a terrific leaper, but you just don't assume you're going to get that three off. Here fouls on McGlore, who goes to the bench with Turner. Bradley's back in. Hogan returns as well. 13 points now for Marcus Maben. The sophomore from Clarksville, Tennessee. Another thing we should talk about a little bit here, Sean, is Conference USA. Mm -hmm. You know, St. Louis with a huge win over Kansas. Cincinnati has been knocking off everybody. Playing well. Looks like a deep, tough lead. SEC will be as well. Auburn, a surprise team there, 11-0 at this time. Hadn't played anything like this kind of a schedule. Foul underneath on Alex Sanders as he was trying to run to the block with Hashimu Evans. Louisville picked to finish second in the American division of Conference USA. That conference is divided into two divisions. Cincinnati picked to win the American division by the coaches in the preseason, and Louisville second. Two fouls now on Sanders. Here's Hashimu Evans at the line. His first name, a Swahili name, meaning strong warrior. And he certainly is that. They also tell us he is about as neat and meticulous off the court as a person can be. The point where he is teased endlessly about it by his teammates. 
An 11 point lead for Louisville. They have the ball as we tick down toward five and a half minutes remaining. And a foul called on Smith. The Kentucky defense, not what it usually is today. Well, Saul is very aggressive. We pointed that out throughout the course of the game. And what he's going to do is test an official. Now, he knows it's not important for him to have to play 40 minutes in a game. So he's going to test those officials with aggressive hand checking. Didn't get away with it there. Marcus Maben back at the line. A one and one. Mention he's from Tennessee. Clarksville originally signed with the University of Tennessee. Out of high school, but didn't get the test score necessary to play as a freshman, so he decided to sit out a year. And then he gained the eligibility necessary to play as a freshman, decided instead to come to Louisville. And last year had a little bit of back problems, knee problems. Looks like he's been pretty healthy in this year. 15 points for Maven. Marcus. Where's the number five worn at Louisville by, among others, Jerry Eves, now a coach on Jenny Crum's staff and a member of the 1980 National Championship team. Evans missed a three. Padgett missed a tip. Bradley contested for the rebound, and Kentucky will get the ball largely because of that work of Bradley. Excellent hustle. Evans not hitting that outside jumper, and that's one of the things about this Kentucky team. When they shoot well from the perimeter, they're tough to handle. Today, they just haven't been able to drop it. Against Maryland, they were terrific from the outside. Hogan tried to pass it down low. Last touch by the Cardinals. 5.02 remaining. UK in trouble now. In danger of its second straight loss after winning six in a row before the defeat at the hands of Duke Tuesday night. And they've got to be thinking shot clock a little bit right here. 22 seconds left. Sometimes you forget where you are on that clock. Too much. Smith lost it as he stumbled. And a tip for three for Maven. A bad foul by Hogan. Well, Saul Smith trying to do too much. Now, it's one thing if you put the ball in Turner's hands. He's not in the ball game right now and let him drive. But Saul Smith's not capable of doing it. And he's trying to do too many things one-on-one. -on -one. Goes down right here. And now we've seen Maven, a terrific finisher with his leaping ability. Hopefully should have just let him go. Either let him go or foul him a lot harder. But and earlier. Yes. Here comes Turner back in the ball game. Tubby Smith knows he's got to make that transition. Maven with the free throw. Smith went high in the air, got a hand on the rebound. And a hustle play by Maven to bounce it off Hogan and keep the ball for Louisville. Now there's a guy hustling. He goes all the way from missing the free throw to hustling to save that ball for his team. Four fifty three left. Louisville by fifteen now. And Sanders wisely pulls it out. Now he used a little of the clock up. I don't think Sanders realized how wide open he was. Hopper guarded by Bradley. Not the best of ball handlers, but gets rid of it. Maven tried to pass it off and it was intercepted by Turner. Evans, the dunk. Kentucky doesn't have to panic here. There's still plenty of time in this basketball game, particularly the way it's been played up and down the court. And I think with Turner back out there now, you'll see a little bit more semblance of order. Time approaching four minutes remaining. Shot clock at 10. Murray carried. Yes, good call by Jim Burton and by Billy Packard. Timeout. 357 remaining. Louisville leads by 13. Over its arch rival Kentucky. Time now for the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. We take you to the free throw line. Kentucky to 12 of 20. Louisville 19 of 26. For complete college basketball coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Sean, when you think of this rivalry, in the games that Kentucky has won, there have been a number of blowouts, including one right here in, in Louisville. Louisville, with the exception of one year, 
basically have won their, their games have been close wins. This is the first time they've opened up a double-digit opportunity since way back in December of 88 with Purvis Ellison in that crowd. Since the rivalry resumed in 1983 in the NCAA tournament, Kentucky is 11 and 6 in the 17 meetings. Overall, it's a 20 to 9 advantage in the series for Kentucky, dating back to 1913. Out of bounds, Louisville ball. Padgett, again, as I said, really doesn't have the legs on that jump shot. He was 1 for 18 from 3 to start the season. And a lot of it has to do with just having his legs fresh. He's got the same release. Field created by Evans. Padgett lays it in, and the lead comes down to 11. Now, remember how Louisville was going over the top of the press early in the game. Not a bad foul. And you'd like to force that ball to get the ball down to the non-ball handlers mm -hmm. against this press. Michael Bradley called for a second foul. It'll send Hopper to the free throw line. We reset the game situation for you. Both teams in the double bonus. Over the 10 fouls. Timeouts. Four remaining for Kentucky. Two for Louisville. The arrow favors Louisville. And here's Hopper at the line with four points. And the guy's an 87% free throw shooter. Not the ball handler you want, but you don't mind if he's going to get fouled and go to the line with that kind of stroke. Ryan Hogan back in, replacing Tayshawn Prince. You're right, Hopper now from the free throw line for the season is 14 for 16. He might not have played high school basketball, but he was on a playground somewhere working on his free throw shooting. His junior college coaches said that. One of the things that amazed them for a player who did not play high school basketball was that his fundamentals were excellent. And it's St. Catherine Junior College. Coach Ryan Swanson last year. Ryan drive shot missed. And Murray going out of that call timeout. Knew exactly what he had to do going after that ball. Very intelligent play. Tom McDonough with Billy Packard. Today's game produced by Steve Shear, directed by Bob Fishman, the executive producer of CBS Sports, is Terry Ewert. Our game reset shows that Louisville has just one timeout remaining. They just used one on a heads-up play by Cameron Murray. We'll see Murray. He's running out of bounds. He realizes he's not going to be able to make the save, so it goes in the air, looks right at the referee, calls timeout before he hits the floor. He's made a lot of smart plays out here for his club today, one of the reasons that they're in this lead. And Billy, you talked about it at the top of the telecast. One of the keys to the Kentucky defeat at the hands of Louisville last year was four three-point shooting. They had their worst shooting game of the season. And today, Kentucky two out of 12 from three-point Last play. year, five for 23 from three-point line. And I think throughout the course of the year, there's not going to be a lot that this team's going to be able to do to alter that. They're going to have to shoot well from the outside because they don't have a consistent inside score. Bradley may turn out to be better than he is right now. But uh, that's where they're going to have to get some points consistently in the half court. And a great job running time. Now need to take a shot. Oh, Evan. That's the last wow. thing he wanted to do. With three seconds on the shot clock, he committed his fourth foul. Boy, you don't want to do that. Pull off and reset. He might have been concerned about the fact it looked like Sanders was going to set a screen on him, so he beats it over the top of the screen, then he makes body contact. Murray does a pretty good job, though, drawing some fouls. Mm -hmm. You have to admit that. I mean, there wasn't a lot of contact. He just kept closing his body in on him. Young man's brother had a pretty sweet stroke, still does. Tracy Murray is his brother. He's also the cousin of former Cal star Lamont Murray. He's also gone on to the NBA. I think in college, Tracy could shoot the ball farther out better than anybody that I've seen play in the college level. I mean, it's just unbelievable range he had on that shot. He was probably Jamal Mashburn who played right here in Kentucky. Well, so that covers a lot of people. You oh, yeah. Uh, just about everybody has come through in the last, uh, I don't want to say how many years. There's another three. Doesn't hit the mark. Murray down the lane and then turned it over to Turner. 
Hard Bradley play. missed the layup, got the ball back and scored, and a quick timeout called by Kentucky as the deficit is 12. Bradley running the floor really well for a big man. And a 20-second timeout for Kentucky. A 20-second timeout for the Kentucky Wildcats. Gives us a chance to remind you that all of the clock every time you touch that ball, if possible. Maneuver, wisely used, stepping a man out of bounds, get the ball inbounds. They credited Wayne Turner with a steal a moment ago when he intercepted that pass by Murray. Two steals today for Turner. He now has 201 for his career, tied with Tony Delk for the all-time steals lead at the University of Kentucky. One more steal, and Turner will be number one in Kentucky history. Down to 12 seconds. Now, again, here for your Kentucky, do not want to foul here. Sanders, a three that might have been the finishing touch on this one. But Kentucky comes quickly back, and Turner scores, and all of a sudden, the lead is 10, and a timeout called with a minute 15 left. Tubby really knows how to use this clock. Been down to 10 points. 120 and one full timeout left for Tubby Smith, who breaks the huddle with pads on the ball. Saul Smith, Wayne Turner, Hashima Evans, and Jamal McGlore. I think if you're Kentucky, let Sanders touch the ball in the inbounds and foul him immediately. Well, they don't do that. He's the one bad free throw shooter. When you have a long timeout like that, you have an opportunity to look down the floor and say, who's my opponent have out, out on the floor? Now, they've got some excellent free throw shooters on this Louisville team. One who is not is Sanders. He's only shooting 45%. Mm -hmm. So you set your defense up to let them get the ball to him and then follow him immediately, hoping that he goes to the line, shoots like he normally does, and you don't waste any time off the clock. Instead, it's Cameron Murray to the line, an 85% free throw shooter. Now 9 out of 10 today. He has 13 points. The foul on Saul Smith, his fourth. Yet another collision today between Cameron Murray and Saul Smith. They are well acquainted. And I think that Murray won the battle in the fact that he was by far the better actor. Tayshawn Prince replaces Hashimu Evans. Louisville just shows a little phony pressure, making Kentucky take time to bring it up the floor. Turner with that awkward three. Prince follows and scores. No timeout this time for the Cats. The lead 10. One minute remaining. Sanders no, inbound no, pass no. deflected and stolen by McGlore. Prince a hurried three. Oh, 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 oh. Goodness. I hope he's okay. Boy, did he take a fall. He went high into the air and caught it and landed flat on his back oh. with the ball. Boy, that was a tremendous fall. Turner, the great competitor that he is, gets right up off the floor. Look at that fall. Nothing to protect him. And he's oh, okay. He's still out there. there. He's a call for travel. Up pass by Murray. Well received by Nate Johnson. No time left for Kentucky now. And a foul on Padgett. If you're going to foul, I don't know why they didn't foul right away. Mm -hmm. Obviously a terrific victory for Conference USA and Louisville. Bragging rights for the state. But for Kentucky fans, remember what happened last year. I think they take that same trade off oh, again. I guarantee you. A loss to Louisville, but a national championship at the end of the year. Interesting the comments of Eric Johnson yesterday. He said about Louisville basketball, right now we're not even on the map. But if we win the game tomorrow, we'll be on the map. Well, they're on the map again for this performance today. No fluke. They earn the victory. And their lead is 11 with 32 seconds left. Intercepted. That was telegraphed. Cameron Murray picked it off. Oh, they want a little showtime, but the Williams lob for Sanders was incomplete. Turner stopped by Murray. Murray's been a standout in this game, especially down the stretch, making the free throw. Padgett laid it in. This is going to be the second straight loss for Kentucky, and the Cats will drop to 10 and 3, and Louisville with the victory will be 5 and 2. Yeah, Sean, you made a good point at the top of the show. Kentucky has played almost like a murderer's row. 
you wonder how many times can you play at that level. I mean, you know, they had the Maryland coming in there. They had that incredible situation with Duke where I still think that the national championship will determine who was the team of the 90s, even though that Duke did come away with that victory in the Meadowlands, which has almost been like a home court for them. I think they've won 13 of 15 up there uh, in Mike Krzyzewski's time. But I think it'll still come down to which team, Duke or Kentucky, goes further in this year's NCAA mm -hmm. tournament as the, the team of the decade. But uh, they have had to put it on the line a lot. There's yeah. not to make any excuses for them, but a much fresher Louisville team here today than West Kentucky. And Maven makes it 83 to 72. 19 for Maven. McGlure has his stats. And now Maven content to run out the clock. And for the second year in a row, Louisville has defeated Kentucky. There'll be no Johnson rejected by McGlure. They exchange words and shoves earlier, and here they go again. And now Hopper and McGlure. Now they got to get a good job by Paget to get McGlure out of there. And Johnson really, you saw McGlure go after Johnson. He thought Johnson was going to try to dunk on him. Remember what happened earlier. There was some bad blood between these two. McGlure actually made a pretty clean but strong block there. And now Nate James goes back and taunts him a little bit. And here comes McGlure. Not a good scene. And But there's Paget doing a terrific job on his part separating the two players. He broke up both skirmishes between the two. He mentioned earlier McGlure and Nate Johnson have each been in their respective coaches doghouse this year and they should be back in it after the way they behaved here today really the only blemishes on this game at all were the two problems that they had and the officials again did a tremendous job to restore order quickly with help from the teams and coaches staff uh, coaching staff the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game uh, Michael Bradley from Kentucky and Marcus Maven of Louisville Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need once again the final score Louisville 83 Kentucky 74 here's Jim Nance in New York